now I'll be doing the show by myself tonight. Richard Phelps couldn't make it. Nellie Harrington, Brandon Lautier, uh, 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 Lucy Fournette, and and uh, Emily Welsh couldn't make it. You know, uh, and and uh, so anyway, I'll be doing it tonight. And tonight uh, it is my honor to welcome. A, a war hero, a Vietnam veteran, uh, Tom Green. Tom Green. Yeah. Welcome, Tom. Yeah. Tom will be talking and talking about the veterans and everything tonight, the veteran affairs and all that tonight. And and before that, we start off with prayer. And I would like to say especially prayer for Denver Nobles and and Rosalind Nobles, who are two of the head of the NAMI group, which I belong to, and we meet every uh, first and third Sunday of the month at the Lutheran Church, which is behind Academy, and it's from 6 o'clock to 7.30 at night, the first and third Sunday of the month. So uh, this, I think, uh, last Sunday it was, uh, it was a meeting. Uh, anyway, uh, we start off with prayers for people. I would like to pray for my good friend, Patsy Bertrand, whose granddaughter, Sonny Bertrand, is getting married uh, the day after Thanksgiving, and I would like to say kudos to Sonny. And I was invited, so I'm gonna do my best to go to the wedding. Sunday, Sonny is a great little lady. She's uh, my, one of my best friends, Possum Bertrand's daughters, daughter. And Possum was a great guy. Possum was the guy that owned Possum's restaurant uh, a few years back. And Possum always hired me for a job, you know. And 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 I worked at Possum's as a dishwasher and 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 uh, cook sometimes. And uh, I would like to say uh, I gave him. Uh, I wasn't as well as I am now. And and I would work. And get frustrated and quit. And one time during May Day, May uh, uh, Mother's Day in May, uh, I worked and it was so hard with so many dishes. It's the most busy season of the year for Possum. And and I walked out of the place and quit. Where Possum and my good friend Todd, his brother, who I love deeply, uh, I had to to to, to cover for me. And I walked out and left them in a big barn. And guess what? Possum hired me back. Oh, you know, what a great guy. And what can I say for Possum's mother, Patsy Bertrand? Patsy always put up with me. And I'm sure she would have wanted to shoot me sometimes. But this is the type of lady. I've been knowing this lady almost all my life. And she, and you know, we, we all get ugly sometimes, lose our tempers and everything. This lady has never been ugly to me in my entire life. How incredible is that? You don't meet many people like that. She is class, class, class. And what can I say for prayers from Miss Jackie Ballou, my guardian angel who has always been there. That's another one. Miss Jackie is our underwriter for our show, and, and she is another one that is class, class, class. And I would also like to pray for my friend Mike Pritchard. Mike, uh, and another, Mike is a good guy. Uh, you know, I, I came up with Mike. Uh, back in the days in St. Martinville when we were hanging around at Ray Boy's Bar. Mike was working over there. We became good friends. Mike, Mike has gone through some difficulties. We go to half a million homes. We ask for prayers for Mike. And, and also, uh, I asked for prayers for my friend uh, Jimmy Collada. Jimmy had a stroke a few months back, and we asked for prayers for Jimmy. Uh, so anyway, ladies and gentlemen, and Mike Fusilier and Tina. Mike is the guy that led me to the Lord uh, 26 years ago when people had nothing to do with me. And Mike was a Christian, and he had compassion for a hurting brother and gave me my start. So without Mike's help, I wouldn't be on this TV show right now. And I wouldn't be a writer, which I am, I have become. And I will, and, and because Nellie and I and Richard believe in, in journaling and write, and also Denver Nobles uh, for therapy, that I have written seven books 
and I am on my eighth book right now, and I would like to read something from him before we start with the show. You might find this interesting. Okay, uh, uh, let me see where it is. Uh, okay, it's right here. Okay. Let me see. Okay, let me just read this. Uh, now, this is not what I wanted, but I made a mistake. Okay. For, for their Christmas vacation, Richard and Edna enjoy their Christmas. No, that's not it. Let me look again. I, I had something that I wanted to read. Uh, okay, let me read this. This is my book called Heaven's Warriors. It's a Christian book. And, and at the prayer meeting on Friday, it's Richard from the usual prayer for his congregation and prayers and, did, and laying of hands on his people for healings and the usual concerns for health, jobs, prosperity, and helping families and ordinary prayers of the usual day in and day out life. However, after his run-in with Anton a few months ago, Richard has added uh, another 30, 30 minutes of prayer after find, finishing the regular prayer meeting in which most of the patrons leave. However, his prayer warriors stay like Melvin LeVere, his son Johnny, Bobby B. Avenue, and the Bertrand Garros, and Jenny, with also Father Bill, who has become a regular at the Friday meetings, and also Richard's happy to see his friends Mike and Tina Fuso, whose prayer meeting is on thanks to Thursdays. So Richard goes to Mike's on Thursdays to pray, and Mike comes to Richard's to pray on Fridays. Then suddenly, as most of the congregation have left, a flaming bottle suddenly flies through a window of the church, causing everyone to jump off from their pews and trying to put it put the fire out. When other bottles start flying through the windows, starting to increase with the altar and pews and floors burning and Molotov cocktails landing on top of the roof of the church and Richard grabs a fire extinguisher to put the fire out, but it is only one extinguisher and the rest of the men are trying to smother the fire with blankets. But things look fruitful when Richard then says, God, I ask your help. I do your work with all my heart and give you the glory. Please don't forsake me. But whatever your will is, I accept it. Suddenly Michael and Zorn, the angels, appear. And since all of the special prayers have seen the angels before, uh, people have seen the angels before, they are happy and pleased for help and ask the angelic friends for help. Then Micah and Zora start blowing on the fire through their mouths, and lo and behold, the fire starts to ebb and burn out. Then the angels look up at the roof and fly to the ceiling and blow on the roof inside and outside, putting the fire completely out. While Richard is outside the church, he sees a few trucks speeding away and notices Sheriff Ben Bonaire's car leaving, last speeding away. Just as I thought, Richard says, as he pulls out his cell phone and takes a picture of the truck and sheriff's car leaving the scene. That's my book about, you know, uh, the good against the bad, you know, and, and with angels into the freight, coming into the freight. It's kind of like a supernatural book, you know, okay. with, 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 uh, with demonic activity and angels. Uh, this is my book called uh, A Father's Love, about a child growing up in the, in the 50s. Uh, when Jude finally goes inside, everyone, this is on Christmas, is giving gifts to each other, with Kaiser and Olene giving Joan a string of, of pearls 
which, which Joan, who is wearing a white blouse and tan skirt, immediately gets Jack to put a pearl necklace on. Jack fashions the clip on Joan's necklace, and she proudly looks at herself in the mirror and kisses her mom and dad for such an expensive gift. Jack then gives Joan a lady's Timex which, watch, which she also puts on, on t and teasingly asks Jack if he has the right time, in which Jack says, you sassy girl, and gives her a kiss saying, Merry Christmas, lover. I have something for you too, Joan replies and says, you won't believe what I bought you. And she also produces a man's Timex, Timex watch and says, back to you, lover. And Joan gives Jack a really big kiss. Where, where everyone is smiling and at, at the rekindled love between Jack and Joan. Then after Joan gives gifts of clothes for her parents and sister, Janet and her daughter, Kelly, she looks at, at Jude and tells Jack to give Jude his gift for him. Jack then gives Jude a red wrap package with a green ribbon, where inside the package is the new Mickey Mouse Kids typewriter. This is in, 19, in the 1953, I think. Jude is elated and even walks up to Jack and shakes his hand. 1956. Then after a few more gifts of clothes and Jesus books by his aunt and grandparents, Jude and the rest of them, the gang sit down to eat a 15 pound turkey with a roast and deer and duck and really the same kind of meal Joan cooked for Thanksgiving a month, month ago. This Christmas is very, meal is very good and after the meal, everyone sits at the black and white television to watch the special movie rerun of Prince Valiant starring James Mason, Janet Lee, and Robert Wagon, Wagner, who all do a terrific job of performing the action events of the good guys fighting the bad guys with Jude enjoying the jousting and sword fighting. After the movie, Joan picks up her family and they all wish their Merry Christmas to everyone, and they leave in Jackson Palace to go back home for a restful Christmas night. How's that sound? That sounds interesting. Oh yes, all kinds of uh, thoughts in there. Yeah. Uh, before we start the show, I would like to read, and, 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 and uh, Tom has a very interesting uh, a presentation for you, for you people tonight, especially for our heroes, our veterans that, you know, we, like, like Donald Trump says, are the greatest people in the world. So let me, let me read that something I got from a veteran that wrote me a letter. I have read up your new role leading one, leading Wounded Warrior Project and I want to offer my congratulations. I also want to share my own story with you from one veteran to another. Like you, sir, I didn't serve in Afghanistan. I, I was in the service long, but this, I guess he made a mistake. But anyway, like you, I served in Afghanistan. It was, I, it was there that I lost part of my leg to an IED and had the experience that contributed to my PTSD. My t PTSD made me into a person who wasn't me. There were times when I was sharp with my wife and my seven-year-old son. There was a time when I couldn't see any light at the end of the tunnel. But uh, WWP, Wounded Warriors, provided the light I needed when I needed it most. WWP gave me the chance to interact with other warriors who had similar experiences, and now I know I'm not alone. I've grown, grown closer to my family, and, I've, and I have found a new purpose in life post-military, thanks to the education WWP has, ha, has helped me get. In short, there is no doubt that, that it's, it's Wounded Warriors programs change lives. I am living proof of that. So if you hear anyone say that WWP isn't needed, I ask you please share my story with them. WWP is needed now more than ever. I don't know where our injured warriors will go if WWP isn't there to offer them support in a community of other veterans. Though thank you for your service and for your leadership. 
as you take a stand for veterans and families. Ah, that was respectfully Sean Corpus. So anyway, and, 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 and as our tribute to our warriors, which our president calls the greatest people on earth, uh, I would like to uh, welcome Tom Green, Green again. And, and, and we're going to be asking Tom some questions. So Tom, what's your credentials? What, what, I know you have, you got the medals, you got everything. Well, you know, uh, I served uh, uh, in the Marine Corps, which today happens to be the 241st anniversary birthday of the Marine Corps. Wow. So uh, November 10th is highly celebrated uh, by the, um, all Marines. Uh, this evening was a cake cutting ceremony and, uh, and of course the tradition of uh, providing a, a piece of cake from the oldest Marine to the youngest Marine. And that went on tonight and I was very proud to be part of that wow. and to, uh, to assist in the presentation. Our Commandant of the Marine Corps uh, always sends out a birthday message and that message was uh, quite clear tonight and it was uh, very uh, appropriate uh, for this particular time in our history. Wow, that's so, awesome. But I have, uh, you know, I went into the Marine Corps back in 1970 uh, through 76. Uh, during that time, a lot of turmoil to say the least. Yes. Uh, I saw a lot of, uh, of our veterans uh, in different ways, uh, those that had a lot of enthusiasm and so forth. Uh, when they first went in and uh, by the time they came uh, back from uh, Vietnam, uh, there was a, a different life in their eyes. Yes. So, you know, there was a lot of things that were going on. It gave me a little perspective about wanting to be part of the healing process. Now, you can go about it in different ways, from becoming a doctor to becoming, a, you know, a social worker, or maybe you can uh, attempt to uh, make changes. Uh, my capacity right now, I am one of the uh, commissioners for Veterans Affairs here in Louisiana. Awesome. I take a, a, a lot of uh, uh, calls from veterans, uh, and I try to direct them to the appropriate people to be able to get the necessary help or guidance that they seek. I'm also very active as a co-chair of the Veterans Action Coalition of South Louisiana. We have for seven years, and I've only done part of it for about three, but for seven years, our leaders uh, that started back then, uh, Mr. Rodney Hamilton, uh, Mr. Dr. Uh, Skip Palmentier, Mr. Jim uh, Nunn, and uh, Mr. Tom Grote, all were you know, extreme uh, catalysts in driving all of the uh, questions at that time. We asked a lot of the VA uh, at that time and uh, got very few answers. Yeah. We started uh, uh, pushing uh, for uh, a new clinic. Our clinic here in, in Lafayette was, uh, and still has been up until this new one is being built, or has been built now and is about to open, uh, was, uh, fell short in uh, supplying all the necessary needs for our veterans. And then there were about 60,000 veterans around this area, huh? Yes, uh, uh, approximately 65,000 when you start talking about uh, the surrounding parishes and uh, Lafayette and so forth. Well, with that being said, we knew something had to happen. Yeah. And what we did is we talked uh, a great deal with uh, the uh, Alexandria, along, which was the medical center that uh, supported us down mm -hmm. here. And then we found that there was some uh, uh, lack of communication as a whole. Uh, and I'll just leave it at that, but uh, we did go uh, to our uh, leadership, uh, Congressman Bustani, Senator Vitter, and others, uh, and most recently, uh, certainly uh, Senator Cassidy, and, and uh, so forth, uh, Senator uh, Congressman Abraham, and all talked about, you know, wait a minute now, let's take a good step back and realize what has to happen to make the VA the best it can be for our veterans in Louisiana. And it came down to uh, seeking uh, services more at home. 
You know, they, a lot of uh, different uh, people over the many years, including uh, uh, different uh, secretaries of Veterans Affairs, had, had indicated that, well, we need to get the uh, services where the veterans are. Mm -hmm. Well, the veterans are in Lake Charles, in Lafayette, and surrounding areas. And, and, and not as much as they are uh, when Alexandria was first built. Yeah. Okay, back many, many, many years ago, uh, it may have been uh, deemed necessary or considered being the, the ideal spot, put it in the middle of the state, and then everybody come to it. Well, that's no longer the case. Yeah. With technology, medical needs, uh, travel, uh, the difficulties that we now know in veterans, uh, that veterans experience, you know, uh, that's unacceptable. Yeah. So we've pressed uh, a great deal and continue to press for quality medical services, the best that can be supplied uh, at a clinic uh, as close as we can get to uh, the, the veterans. Thus, Lake Charles, uh, Lafayette and Lake Charles, and I'll get to Lake Charles in a minute, but Lafayette uh, started the process. Uh, we had a lot of bumps and so forth in the process. But we finally were able to uh, get on the schedule a new clinic. The one that we existed with for a long time here in Lafayette was about nine, ten thousand 10,000 square feet. Yeah. Well, the new clinic will be in excess of 35,000 square feet. Yeah. Wow. That gave us one, uh, a facility that can house uh, many uh, we call them packs or teams with doctors, nurses, and, and so forth. And then also the specialties that are needed, urology and neurology, uh, the podiatric dentistry, wow. uh, and uh, orthopedics and all. Now, it's not to say that every doctor will be there day one, yeah. but we have in Lafayette a tremendous amount of doctors, specialists, and so forth that are willing and have committed to supporting the VA clinic. They have, they have, they have committed to supporting it? Absolutely. That's they, great. They at different times uh, will, will uh, and we're, we're sort of viewing like once a month, two times a month, whatever they may feel good mm -hmm. about. That's but so they awesome. have to be, by, by uh, law, they have to be part of the VA system. Yeah. So, you know, we then uh, approached, well, how do they get in there without going through 40-page uh, documents that yeah. they fill out and all? As an accredited, uh, board-certified physician, uh, I think that that's uh, not necessary. Yeah. But that's yet to be determined uh, completely. But our whole focus has been on what services do we need, how do we get them, and then Okay, now that we know what we need through uh, the information and databases of the VA, their mm -hmm. own individual databases, uh, to say, okay, well, maybe it's, uh, you know, uh, not a great need initially for a uh, urologist, let's say. Yeah. But as time goes on and more and more patients are aware of our clinic here, our support and all, maybe that one day a week or two days a week or three days a week, then turns into a whole week or a permanent station. Yeah. Oh, so awesome. a lot of those things are going on. Uh, we look at uh, a, a great deal of uh, support from the coalition here in, in uh, Lafayette and, of course, Lake Charles to work with the VA out of Alexandria and Vision 16, which is the entire regional area, uh, which have some really great people at the leadership level that want to and can and have supported the efforts of getting our clinic up and running. That's awesome. This particular uh, next week will be uh, an opportunity for us to uh, open it up for uh, a visit from our, for our Secretary of Veterans Affairs from Washington, D.C. Wow. Are you going to be there? Yes, we will, and I will be there as well. Uh, and we will have an opportunity uh, to not only go through a ribbon-cutting ceremony, wow. but also have the opportunity to discuss uh, some topics of great interest to Louisiana, 
to Lafayette, to Lake Charles, to southwest Louisiana that uh, we feel uh, are uh, absolutely necessary. But at the same time, we want to bring sort of open-ended questions about where are we going to go nationally? What does the VA truly stand for in these different ways, these different subjects? So we'll have our medical uh, uh, consultant, our medical advisor, uh, Dr. Skip Palmentier there. Mm -hmm. We will have uh, uh, leaders uh, not only of the um, Veterans Action Coalition, but members of the board of the coalition that will all participate in a uh, question and answer time. That's awesome. With, uh, the, veteran, with the VA secretary, which is uh, long, long overdue. overdue. Can anybody attend this, or it's going to be a no, special? No, this particular meeting, uh, although, uh, you know, having the ribbon cutting ceremony is, yeah, uh, you is can okay, attend. Yeah. but this particular session, it's a closed session, because yeah. we have worked seven years uh, to try to get uh, the attention to certain particular issues. Mm -hmm. uh, with that, we want to give him not only an important statement, and that is we thank him. Yeah for all of his efforts, because we know that he has been uh, very diligent in uh, attempting to make change. And we know that our VA system uh, still lacks uh, everything that is ideal for the veteran. What's his name again? His name is Mr. Robert Bob McDonald. Okay. Secretary Mac McDonald. And he will be here along with our Secretary of Veterans Affairs uh, in uh, Louisiana, Mr. Joey Strickland. I think Mr. Strickland uh, will probably be more inclined to be in uh, New Orleans because New Orleans New VA Hospital will be having a grand opening or a uh, ribbon cutting. Wait, 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 wait. On they, they built a new VA hospital in New Orleans? Well, the new VA, if you remember back years ago, the VA hospital used to be down there. It was uh, somewhat uh, uh, aging, to say the least. Then it yeah. was flooded during uh, the Katrina event and all. And with all of that, uh, they chose to re, not to rebuild, but to build anew at 2400 Canal Street wow. a hospital. And it is uh, state of the art. Wow. It is ran by Mr. Fernando Rivera, director down there, who is, uh, I'll just say first rate in every way in getting uh, the very best for the veterans. Wow. He is uh, not willing to accept anything but uh, just the absolute perfect. And I look forward to visiting down there, getting a tour, understanding uh, how they uh, will operate, uh, not only from an outpatient standpoint, but also from the inpatient standpoint. Wow. Uh, you know, on the initial uh, information that we had the opportunity to visit one of the meetings down there, uh, it was going along and it was just unbelievable what they were doing That's awesome. uh, in preparation for that opening. So a new clinic and a new hospital for Louisiana. Well, we have that here in Lafayette that will soon be opening. The grand opening here in Lafayette will actually take place December 16th. Wow. But uh, patients and all uh, will be uh, uh, certainly starting uh, uh, before that in, wow. in, in a different way. But, one of the big things that is so important, and we as a coalition in Louisiana and Lafayette, uh, with the guidance of uh, people like uh, Tom Grote and Dr. Skip Palmentier and Rodney Hamilton, and of course uh, Jim, Young, uh, Jim Nunn as well, we have taken a stand on volunteerism. We have many volunteers that will meet and greet patients as they enter into the facility. They will walk with them. They will stay with them. They will guide them to the appropriate areas because 35,000 square feet going down different hallways and so forth get lost. certainly uh, has an opportunity to uh, uh, get some veterans frustrated. So with that being said, uh, we will have that opportunity and we will have it staffed at different times and rotating shifts where the where the volunteers will support the veterans and guide them down these hallways That's and get them to their appropriate uh, locations on a timely basis. Because as anyone knows and has ever gone to a, uh, uh, 
I call it a waiting area for a clinic or whatever. Yeah, you, you wait know, for hours. You wait sometimes far in excess of what you should have. Mm -hmm. So we want to break that old tradition mm -hmm. uh, and work diligently with the VA because I'll tell you, uh, Miss Laura Campbell uh, here in the Lafayette, the uh, uh, manager director that's going to have Lafayette, uh, she's very devoted to just that. Wow. She wants to make sure that everything is done the right way. Our, so, with all of that being said, and the uh, uh, effectiveness of all this new clinic and the new hospital in New Orleans, we see uh, a vast improvement. Of course. In everything. But then you go one step farther, and that is in Lake Charles. We have also a brand new clinic being built today that will be opening probably about the same time next year. Wow. It's 25,000 square feet. Wow. Being able to service at least around the number of 27,000 veterans or more as time grows. The Fort Polk area, the, uh, the reduction in force of uh, the military personnel and those that choose to continue to live in the area and down toward Lake Charles uh, we'll have that opportunity uh, to use those facilities, you know, as, as part of their benefits. And then, of course, the thing that really sticks out for Louisiana and Southwest Louisiana is the economic growth in Lake Charles is appro approximately 25 percent. Wow. It is growing leaps and bounds. What, what is the reason for that? Well, they have a natural gas, uh, cash, if you will. Uh, brand new uh, facilities, refineries, and so forth wow. uh, will be built. Uh, and as they are being built, uh, many, many jobs mm -hmm. are open. Uh, and they're moving a lot of uh, specialists. Uh, and even major company headquarters are uh, in the midst of uh, moving to Lake Charles. Wow. Because it will be approximately that type of growth for another five or six years. Wow, that's awesome. So great opportunities, not only for the veterans, uh, here in Lafayette, for Lake Charles, for New Orleans. Uh, and we have to really look at uh, the different parts. And in Lafayette, although we have the brand, we'll have the brand new clinic open, we have branched out here in Lafayette and said, you know, we really need to focus on our mental health. Okay. Our mental health has a remote facility. We call it the community uh, uh, clinic, CBOC. I didn't know that. Wow. And it's on St. Julian Street, right, right, up, uh, right down where the old Lord's Hospital was. Wow. And with that, that facility has been open. It's about 5,000 square feet, probably going to be expanded to as much as 8,000 square feet. And it sees uh, a lot of our patients, a lot of the uh, uh, PTSD, uh, mental uh, need patients uh, to through psychiatry, psychology, uh, uh, different. Uh, is it open now? It is open. It's functioning, seeing patients, and it is working wonderfully. Wow, that's Four awesome! And uh, if there's any uh, need, uh, as we will be able to give a direction to those that may come to the clinic first. Mm -hmm. the, CBOC, the CBOC A, which is the on uh, 3131 uh, Ambassador Caffrey, mm -hmm. the new clinic will be able to direct them, you know, to the CBOC B, which is the mental health facility on uh, St. Julian Street. Okay, well, let me ask you this: Would it be possible for we could for us to to talk to the people in, in both facilities? To talk about a NAMI, National Associ Alliance for the Mentally Ill, Association for the Mentally Ill. Well, there's all, always uh, that possibility. You know, the VA has uh, their structure, their protocol. Yeah. And certainly uh, going hand in hand with whatever they will, of course, allow and yeah. work with uh, is, uh, of course, the, the answer. Yeah. I think that uh, talking with uh, our uh, uh, key people, directors, local uh, VA staff, and getting the approvals to, to work with the alliances and all, I think is very possible. Okay, that's awesome. That's awesome.
because because our NAMI meetings are like I said earlier are on the first and third Sundays of the month and you know uh, and, and 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 as far as I know there's a lot of veterans out there that are hurting so badly that that aren't getting the aid that they need you know and and I think this new clinic is going to be a boom for it. Well, we, we want it to be. We have uh, made sure that everyone possible uh, is involved uh, from the, uh, the new uh, uh, leadership here in Lafayette, Mr. Robichaud, Mayor Robichaud, and uh, all of the team members of the city government have been playing a vital part That's awesome. in the success. We have a, you know, you know that uh, Ambassador Caffrey is a busy street. Yes. And uh, they have taken upon themselves with our uh, guidance as to how uh, important it is uh, to install a new traffic light right there uh, in front of the turn-in so that uh, people coming from north to south that we'll will have to, to turn across the road, we'll be able to get in there without any difficulty. That's awesome, that's awesome. Because we want, and then of course uh, we have, uh, uh, we call them slow down lanes so they can get into a lane to turn gently into the uh, facility area. Or we have a, uh, a uh, acceleration lane going out of it to be able to have the opportunity to get back into traffic. That's awesome. So Jim. those things, working with the city government, the transportation, uh, the traffic division, and all, uh, they all supported. And, and of course, our city council has been just absolutely great about the veterans and its uh, uh, needs here in Lafayette. That's that's awesome, Tom. That's awesome. Uh, Lafayette, I always love. I love Laf. Lafayette is a class act city to live in. It, it is great. It is great. Well, you know, we have uh, over the years uh, experienced our ups and downs in regards to a veterans care. You know, we have some really positive people, uh, the highest leadership in, in uh, Alexandria, Mr. Peter Dancy, uh, and his associate uh, director, uh, Ms. Uh, uh, Russell, Valerie Russell, has, uh, has worked with us so well and has been instrumental in making uh, the time uh, benchmarks in getting this new clinic up and running. And I, I feel nothing but positive vibrations and uh, they feel very strongly that the dedication of the uh, Veterans Action Coalition was uh, the catalyst that drove the end result. And now, is, what was the Veterans Action Coalition about? Well, it's, a, it's very uh, devoted to making sure uh, our mission statement tells us, tells everyone that we want the very best of medical care, medical facilities uh, that's available. Mm -hmm. We want, it, uh, we want uh, people to know that uh, they can uh, uh, be well supported by uh, the VA. Mm -hmm. we, we ask the VA to work with us. We don't try to go and, uh, uh, and uh, put them down. Yeah. What we try to do is saying, okay, these are the difficulties. These are the things that our veterans speak of more often than not that are difficult for them, be it um, communication, uh, be it understanding. Some of our veterans don't use computers Mm -hmm. Some of our veterans only get mail, you know, and so forth. So it's important that whatever way they are informed, and that's an important part, informing the public, the veterans, as to what is out there and not assume that they know. Mm -hmm. And so we have taken the stand that we are, uh, we together, the coalition, uh, has uh, an obligation where we see something that needs to be conveyed, we asked for uh, some of the detailed information for, from the VA and mm -hmm. provide that out there. We have coalition meetings once a month here in Lafayette at the, uh, uh, at the regional library mm -hmm. out there on uh, Johnson. And uh, it's usually uh, on uh, the Thursday, uh, uh, third Thursday of the month. 
This next meeting, it happens to be on a Tuesday because of holidays and so forth. Mm -hmm. But the 22nd of November at 7 o'clock is our next coalition meeting. Sometimes we uh, fill all the seats in the auditorium there. Wow. Sometimes we have uh, the opportunity for special guests. Uh, this particular uh, uh, meeting, we have a, uh, a doctor of, uh, that's going to come to speak to us about pan pancreatic cancer. Wow. And, uh, you know, it's just wonderful to have uh, that time. It's like a, a free office visit, mm -hmm. so to speak, because yeah. veterans can come in, they can listen, and they can understand uh, what uh, they, the doctor, physician has to offer, but then the opportunity to ask the questions. Mm -hmm. Now certainly we, we don't want to go into a great deal of uh, personal detail, yeah. but the opportunity to say, well, okay, now I understand it better, or now that you've explained how it happens, I have a better understanding, you know, for my well-being. Yeah. So we do that not only here, but in Lake Charles. Uh, I have a podiatric surgeon, uh, an internationally re renowned surgeon, uh, that will be uh, speaking on November 16th, that's Wednesday at the uh, VFW Hall over there. Wow. Last, uh, in September, our last meeting, there we had uh, 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 about 250 people show up. Wow. Not only veterans, but spouses, and, and some of the uh, older kids, you know, that were very interested in, oh, I want to take care of my dad or my mom or my, you know, mm -hmm. uh, my uh, uh, family in some way. So uh, the, the VA sends representatives down to speak at our coalition meetings. Uh, we have these special doctors and specials. Uh, we have other individuals that come in uh, to bring us up to date on certain things, nurses to uh, other uh, people that run uh, different facilities. 232 Health, Ms. Ray Logan uh, has, uh, has come in and, and, and is now part of our uh, board who is uh, just absolutely instrumental in uh, the success of finding out what the veterans need. Wow. So, you know, 232 help, and that's really the, uh, the number you can call uh, to seek any type of advice at any time and direction. They are very, very good. And they were started and supported by Mr. Bob Lowe, who is uh, one of the Lafayette residents for many years that has passed on this last year. Oh. But uh, uh, certainly left a, a mark and a uh, I'll call it a, uh, a help uh, mm -hmm. through 232 help uh, that has been great. Wow, that's awesome. That's awesome. I hope y'all got that, ladies and gentlemen. This, this is a slew of information for the new clinics that are sprouting up all over in, in, in Louisiana. Uh, that, that is great. Uh, uh, and, and, and you know, with the new administration, the new government in place, I'm thinking, you know, like, like I believe with our new president that the, the VA will be uh, given more funds to help their veterans, you know? Well, I'm not into that, but uh, I do understand it and I do uh, monitor different things. But, you know, our uh, existing uh, Secretary of Veterans Affairs, uh, Mr. Uh, McDonald, uh, again, has been instrumental in trying his best to, to secure things as uh, best as he can. And, uh, and we, we certainly want to express our thanks and our uh, willingness to continue to work with him um, if uh, he remains. Yeah. Uh, if he doesn't, then we'll, we'll continue our efforts as we always have been. Mm -hmm. But you know, one of the, uh, uh, one of the things that we, we cannot dismiss in any way, and I think um, our new president-elect has indicated that was that you know our our, our veterans have to be well taken care of. Of course, of and, course. And uh, I think that uh, it's well said by many that we need to uh, continue to work diligently in changes. Yeah. And support for the veterans. So, you know, I look forward to a. Uh, a real good opportunity, not only with the clinic, with the new hospital, with the uh, building of one in Lake Charles, but most definitely uh, getting it uh, properly staffed mm -hmm. uh, and uh, all the necessary 
state-of-the-art equipment, mm -hmm. which they are almost finished in getting all that That's in. That's awesome. And then also uh, building our coalition here in Lafayette and Lake Charles, because without them and without the support of our leaders, community leaders and all, uh, we would still be searching for that clinic. Yeah. You know, and I take my hat off to so many uh, of those individuals that stood and supported uh, every effort that the, uh, the uh, coalition uh, has done. And uh, not to dismiss, you know, the efforts uh, only from a short period of time because he's only been back in Louisiana a short period of time. But uh, uh, Secretary Jory Strickland has been absolutely the greatest benefit to our uh, Louisiana Department of Veterans Affairs mm -hmm. uh, that could ever be. Uh, his uh, stance has been, go look, mm -hmm. go see, is it the way it should be? And uh, he has given uh, a lot of guidance to our commission, mm -hmm. has given a lot of guidance to his uh, uh, deputies and, and, and staff, and has uh, concentrated a, an effort to make sure that promises, if made, are kept. And I see uh, some of our uh, uh, VA homes, like the one in Jennings, first class. Wow. Great, great people and uh, have been uh, identified as uh, uh, an exceptional facility. We want all the facilities in Louisiana to do that. He's been instrumental in getting the cemeteries for our veterans in various parts of the state. And we are working real closely with Senator uh, Morsch out of Jennings uh, for the um, completion of a veterans cemetery there. Wow. And it will be the only one in southwest Louisiana. Wow. But it's been long in coming. So with all of that being said, very positive. Uh, we have great things to look forward to. Uh, we can't turn our back or turn our heads. We've got to keep focused keep on going. that yellow brick road. Mm -hmm. But uh, as I said before, I think that the leadership uh, as well as the uh, devotion of key people here in Louisiana uh, continues to uh, make a difference. I think. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's really good information. Now let me ask you this, a little change from the subject. Uh, you were in Vietnam, right? Well, I was in the Vietnam era of campaign. I was with the evacuation of Vietnam. Okay, you were with the evacuation of Vietnam. Okay, a little story. Uh, maybe you, you would like to share. How was the evacuation of Vietnam? Well, you know, my devotion to uh, uh, the different areas were uh, to making sure that the civilians uh, and all uh, left uh, and were properly uh, handled in so far as uh, buildings and, uh, and uh, different uh, facilities. Uh, once they got back to the United States, a, a great deal of effort was put in at Camp Pendleton, uh, 7th Engineer Battalion, and, and others were uh, uh, devoted to making sure that they were far in excess of what the civilians were experiencing over there mm -hmm. in uh, Vietnam. Uh, there's a lot of people, a lot of refugees, uh, and a lot of U.S. servicemen and women with families from mm -hmm. Uh, the Vietnam era. And we have, uh, uh, to this day, uh, have a, a tremendous respect for those that have had the opportunity to come and to uh, live out their lives here in mm -hmm. a new country. And of course, many that I have, uh, am familiar with, do have a tremendous pride in the United States. That's great. That's good. It's good to hear, and of course, uh, many have uh, uh, have been very hard workers, yeah. to say the least. Yeah. So, with all of that being said, you know, uh, there's nothing that I look at as being a uh, uh, a good ending to something when you have to walk away from it. Yeah. And uh, you know, I'm not going to go into political type of things, but uh, certainly. Uh, uh, disappointment reigned for many years. Yeah. Where some of our uh, servicemen were not able to come back in their uniforms. 
simply because of the attitude of our country. Yeah. So as time has gone on, and I see this today with the uh, uh, everything from what we went through in uh, Iraqi freedom and and all of the things that went on in Afghanistan and all, servicemen were looked at in a different light. That's right. You know, they came back, they were honored, they should be honored as every veteran on this Veterans Day. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we're coming up on um, an anniversary here tomorrow that uh, should spark everybody's emotion. Uh, that being those that have had loved ones that did not yeah. survive different conflicts. But we've been all over the world and history has told us many times that, you know, uh, we have been uh, and, and continue to be somewhat of a policeman mm -hmm. uh, of, the world. Uh, of world conflicts. But, uh, you know, there's a lot to be said about the, uh, when you leave the service and you move back into civilian life, uh, it's a continuous to pay it forward mm -hmm. in, to every citizen. I mean, your experience, you've got this ability, you've weathered the storm, let's go in and say, how can I apply myself in civilian life mm -hmm. now, you know, to be able to help other citizens and to make us honor our flag, honor the country, and honor each other. Yeah. Because every single one of us, every veteran, is important, be it uh, a six-month veteran or a 30-year veteran. Mm -hmm. And when I, uh, when I go home or I'm out in the, the public, I usually wear a veteran cover. Yeah. So that people will recognize that I love my country, mm -hmm. I respect it, and I expect uh, all of those that want to live free mm -hmm. in the home of the brave, Mm -hmm. Because without those brave people, we, we wouldn't have the freedom. We wouldn't be free. Had. No, no. So, you know, Veterans Day uh, sparks a, a tremendous uh, emotion in many of our veterans. And uh, we should be very proud and we should display that immensely yeah. on this day. Yeah, I would like to say uh, 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 something that I picked up. And, and and you young people and might 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 uh, might agree with me that when I see an older gentleman, you know, like this isn't like Japan. This country isn't like Japan or China, where the older people are revered. You know, it it, it isn't like that in 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 America. You know, just especially with so many young people, they they just look at older people like. Well, that's an old person, and not worth anything, you know. They don't realize that that's you know the the old lady is someone's mother or grandmother, and and the old man might have served in this country, defending this country, so the young people can be free to do what they want. And then I would like to uh, to tell y'all if y'all see a guy or a woman with a veteran's hat saying veteran. Or, or the Air Force or whatever, walk up to them and shake hands with them and thank you. Because that's the reason you are here. And you walk in the road free. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, that's what I always do. Well, we all have a sense of pride uh, being a veteran. Yes. Uh, we should, uh, as I do, I, you know, I throw out my chest and I make sure that people know of my uh, desire to uh, be supportive of our country. Yeah. And uh, when the opportunity comes to salute the flag, salute it with pride. Mm -hmm. And when the opportunity to say the Pledge of Allegiance, mm -hmm. do it with pride mm -hmm. and dedication and conviction. Mm -hmm. because. You know, one of the things that I have found in my talks to different schools and elementary schools and so forth was to ask the question, you know, what do you think of, what is a veteran? And the little, you know, six-year-old to eight-year-old and whatever, you know, uh, one the other day said, uh, well, that's a great day off. <laughs> and I said, you know what, well, you know, we need to make sure that our young people 
know what a veteran is about, what Veterans Day is all about. And that's an opportunity I have tomorrow as I speak to, you know, a number of, of schools. Wow, that's awesome, Tom. Just to let them know how important it is. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tom. Well, it was very an honor, honor to have you. Well, thank you for having me, and I look forward to uh, maybe another time come back. We, 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 we would be honored to have you back. We you would bet. be honored. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we, th we thank you all for tuning into this show. Uh, and as you all know, this country is going into a new era, and, and, and I, would just, uh, I would just suggest that we all try to uh, look up, overlook everyone's issues that we all have and try to, be, try to smile a little bit. Of course, pray all the time. Prayer and love are two of the most powerful forces in the world. So pray ceasingly to, to our God, Jesus, because he's as real as, as, as reality is. And and and, uh, and 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 try to be nicer to everybody. And 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 we're, this country is going into a new era. 